What's up, guys? We are back with another solo episode. Last week was a solo episode, and this week is a solo episode. And that's for several reasons. But most importantly, I have been really thinking about my program that I've been building, and I hope that it gets released before the first of the year. And I just want to dive into that a little more. I kind of unpacked it last week, and I want to dive in a little more and and just share thoughts and kind of see where it goes, you know? This episode might be short because I don't have a list of things to discuss or topics, but as you guys know, I like to rant and I like to talk about stuff. So we'll just see where it goes. But you know, what kind of inspired me to sit down and record right now is I just listened to the new Joe Rogan episode. Obviously I got a shout out on it. So people are hitting me up, dude, you got to listen to this. And I listened to it and it was a great episode. My friend, Sean Baker was the guest. And the reason it was a great episode not because I got mentioned, but well, that's one of the reasons, but the reason it's a great episode is because they really delve down the rabbit hole of personal excellence. They don't call it that. That's what Andy Frisella calls it, but it's all encompassing. When you take control of your own personal health, your own personal sovereignty, and just become responsible for you. And that is something that I think is lost. And they talk a lot about that. This is why I think this is the most important mission of my life. You know, I've been an advocate for personal sovereignty and personal freedoms. I've been an advocate for pushing back against tyranny, telling the government no, telling the government to go fuck yourself. I've been an advocate of that ever since I got fired, ever since this platform was built and the podcast came into existence. But why is that so important? The reason that's important is because... In order to be free people, we have to be willing to stand up for what we believe in. We have to be willing to push back. We can't be intimidated. We can't be subjugated. All of these things are very, very important for our own personal, it's just our own overall personal success in life. But one thing that I've been thinking about a lot lately, and I've talked about it before, so this isn't necessarily a new concept, but I've just been putting more energy into it. Sure, pushing back against the government, telling everybody to fuck off, having your fucking, you know, your your stockpile of guns and ammunition ready to go to war. I love all that stuff. And it's necessary. You can't be a free person if you're not willing to push back and fight for what's important. But just remember, guys, the journey from right now until the day we are confronted with conflict, it still exists. This is our day to day life. As we interact with our friends and our colleagues and our family and our children, we have to be willing to sacrifice some aspects of life to be able to be willing and able to fight for our freedoms. And I get that, but how much do we have to sacrifice? Does it have to consume our entire being? Do we have to just be scrolling Instagram all day and seeing all of these things about the Biden administration and the, the, all the fucking crime happening in the country and all the conflicts all over the world? And it's like, again, you guys know how I like to articulate this, informed but not consumed. And the reason that I've come up with that saying is because I've been consumed. You guys fucking know I've been consumed. You've listened to episodes where I have fucking ranted for an hour straight. And you're probably going to get more of those episodes in the future because sometimes you do need to get fired up. Sometimes you do need to look at what's happening in our society and say, fuck no, that is unacceptable and shine a spotlight on it and talk about it and be willing to push back against it. But what's equally or maybe more important is being able to enjoy the ride while it's happening. If you're not enjoying the ride while it's happening, what's the point of fighting for it? What's the point of being fired up? What's the point of being triggered? And so I think like anything in life, it's a dichotomy. I stole that word from Jocko and I'm making it my own. The dichotomy of pursuing our personal freedom is finding that middle ground where we become the person that is capable of fighting for what we love while simultaneously taking care of ourselves in the process, taking care of ourselves emotionally, taking care of ourselves physically, taking care of the the dietary needs that your body needs to be able to function properly. 
And again, I just listened to Rogan and Sean talk about this. And what we're finding more and more every day is your physical health, your physical preparedness, the the nutritional choices that you make. It's not just about looking at yourself in the mirror and seeing a six pack. Don't get me wrong. I like being lean. I like being jacked. When I'm in super fucking good shape, I hate putting a shirt on because it's actually nice to be a 43 year old man and be in elite shape. You know, having people look at you a little differently, you can call it ego, but it's, it feels fucking good. It feels good to put in the work and, and, and bear the fruits of your labor and be the person that you're trying to be. All right. But what's more important than what you see in the mirror, man, it's how you feel. And I'm not just talking about how you feel emotionally or how you feel, or I should say, I'm not just talking about how you feel physically. I am talking about how you feel emotionally and how you feel spiritually. And what they're finding is more and more of the American diet is comprised of processed food. So you can, you can jump on whatever bandwagon you want nutritionally, right? Oh, I'm a vegan. I only eat vegan. Well, Oreos are vegan. All right. Or I'm carnivore. All right. I only eat meat. And, and, and a lot of people start to get really, really fixated on making their dietary choices become like another tribe that they're part of. And guys, I've done it all. I've done paleo. I've done whole 30. I've done carnivore. I landed on fruit and meat. And the reason I landed on fruit and meat is because when I eat those two foods, I feel good, I look good, and I perform well. I'm a better athlete when I eat a little fruit. And by a little fruit, I mean as many apples as I fucking want. But I promise you, you can't overeat on apples. It's just not going to happen. Show me the person that got fat eating too many grapes or too many apples. That person doesn't exist. If you're drinking water and you're eating ribeye steak and you're eating grapes, you are not going to become a fucking gluttonous pig. It's just not how our physiology works. Now, yes, at the end of the day, calories in versus calories out is still a formula that you need to take into consideration. And if I'm, if I'm just sitting in a chair and I'm being fucking stagnant and I'm not doing anything and I'm not training and I'm eating 20 ribeyes a day, that is not a recipe to have the body composition that I want. I understand that. But my point is, as long as you are eating nutritionally dense foods that are not so calorically dense, like all the processed foods are, you're going to find that it is exponentially more easy to maintain a healthy body composition while simultaneously feeling satiated. And obviously feeling satiated is a discipline thing too, right? We want to eat until we feel fucking stuffed. And that's, that's the American way. Every meal we eat, we eat until we can't have another bite of food. And if you do that, you're setting yourself up for failure. So I wanted to talk about these things and I, in relation to the, the platform that I'm going to build to try and build an accountability platform where we make decisions, we set goals, and we, we live a lifestyle that is actually going to be beneficial to becoming the motherfucker you're supposed to be. And when you become the motherfucker you're supposed to be, you're going to find your mental health and your fucking overall happiness and how you feel about yourself spiritually is going to improve exponentially. You cannot shine to your full potential with a fucking beer belly and being fucking 30 pounds overweight. You just can't do it. And, and people can say whatever they want, you know, we're in an era now where people get online and, and they celebrate being fat. And they, they celebrate, um, body positivity, no matter, you know, and everybody's equal and it doesn't matter. And all that's bullshit. It's bullshit. And we know it is since when is living a life with no discipline, no direction, no standards going to take you to the top. It it's never has, and it never will. And the reason that so many people in our society are perpetuating this In my opinion, it's one of two things. The first thing is if you're fucking gluttonous and you're fat and you're weak, well, then you're, you're a fucking, 
easy person to control. You can't be defiant if you're physically and emotionally weak. You just can't be. So the powers to be, they want you looking like that. They want you feeling like that. But the other group of people that are proponents of it are people that are stuck there. Misery loves company. And if, if you've arrived at a place where you're a young lady and you're 200 pounds overweight and you're just drowning in your misery, well, maybe I'm going to get on Instagram and say, you know what? This actually feels good being here. And they might not even be doing it consciously, but what they're doing is they're bringing people down to their level. Oh, look, she's happy and she eats pizza. Maybe I can start doing that. Oh, look, she's happy and she hasn't exercised in 10 years. Why do I need to exercise? And what they're trying to do is they're trying to trick you to fall down to their level. And it's the crabs in the bucket mentality. It really is. People see you starting to ascend. They want to pull you back because it's not good to watch the people around you start to figure life out and start to win. And you're not. And so when you see that happening, you got one of two choices. You can say, how can I be better? What do I need to do to fucking become more strong and capable and more resilient and all the things we talk about all the time? Or you can say, poor me, that person, that person looks like they're, they're figuring it out and I'm not and fuck that person. And a lot of people land on that. And I don't think it's a, I don't necessarily think it's a conscious choice. Anyone whose brain that works, if you see your friend becoming fit or wealthy or, or, or building a relationship with somebody that, that brings them joy. You can't on a conscious level say, oh, I don't like that. But you can say, ah, it doesn't feel good when they're doing well and I'm not. And you got to ask yourself, if you're that person, why are you coming to that conclusion? Is it really anything they're doing that's making you feel bad about yourself? Or is it the lack of what you are doing? making you feel bad about yourself. And when you see other people winning, it starts to shine a spotlight on your deficiencies. Well, we, we, we need to jump in with both feet and conquer those deficiencies. And the beautiful thing about it, there is no finish line. I should say that's the scary thing about it and the beautiful thing about it. All wrapped up into one fucking present because this is a lifestyle. There is no finish line. The, f- the fact of it is, is the more you invest into making the right choices with this lifestyle, the better overall experience you're going to have while you're on this fucking planet. And that just is what it is. And so what specifically needs to happen? What do we need to do as individuals on a daily basis to make sure we're on the path to becoming a better person? And I know to some people it sounds egotistical or it sounds vain, but your physical body is the foundational element of everything that you are, period. And it's not just, again, it's not just who you see in the mirror. It's producing the right hormones. It's, it's, it's having the right levels of hormones flowing through your blood that can dictate your happiness, that can dictate if you're becoming depressed or not, that can dictate how much fat your body starts to store based on what foods you're eating. Like everything starts inside of your body and it goes into your brain. And if you don't think your physical health and your mental health are intimately intertwined, you're telling yourself a lie. You are a hundred percent telling yourself a lie for whatever reason. You know, when the the food choices that we eat or or the food choices that we make and the foods that we eat, we understand how that affects your heart, how it affects your artery, arterial health, how it affects your, your liver and your kidneys. And the list goes on and on and on all the way down to like your gut microbiome and, uh, you know, the, the, the microbiome that's inside of your intestines and inside your stomach and all of this stuff, right? We understand that food impacts that dramatically. So why in the fuck would it not impact your brain? It's really bizarre that we feel like every other organ in our body is affected by the nutritional choices we make, but our brain isn't. Of course your brain is. 100% your brain is. And if you're feeding yourself poor food choices, your brain's going to pay the price. 
And that price could be anxiety, depression, suicidal ideations, all the shit that plagues us. And so I want you guys to think about that foundationally. The most important thing you need to do is eat healthy food choices and stay hydrated right there. Boom. Foundational level. That is your fucking mod one. That is your first issued piece of equipment is your physical body. So what are you going to do with it? We got to take care of it. After that, we're off to the races, guys. There's so many different things that we can do. I'm on episode like 182 or something talking about all this different shit for over three years now. There's a million things that we need to be doing on a regular basis, but that's the foundation of it. All right. So the platform that I'm going to build again, it's called forge ferocity because we are forging ourselves into something ferocious. You need to be ferocious. If you're not ferocious, you're compliant. If you're not ferocious, you don't have the capacity to be defiant. You have to be able to push back and say, no, not today, not today, motherfucker. You have to be able to say that. And if you're not a ferocious person, you don't hold the capacity to say that. And what's even more important than holding the capacity to say that is that other people see that you hold that capacity based on your physicality, based on how you walk, based on what you look like, based on how you hold your shoulders, based on your body fat composition. All of that stuff is important. Now, I know, guys, there are exceptions to every rule and maybe being shredded isn't the most necessary thing in the world, but the overall picture of who you are as a man or who you are as a woman is painted based on your health. That is people's first impression of you when you walk in a room. If you walk in a room and you look like Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime, or you look like Chris Farley, everybody is going to start to have ideas of who you are. And those ideas, those first impressions, they're lasting impressions. For those of you who say, I don't give a fuck what other people think about me. Sure you don't. I care fucking, I care massively what other people think about me. If you say, I don't give a fuck what other people think about me, go live in the Arctic tundra alone. Get on that, get on a, get on an episode of that show life below zero and just go procure all your own food and hunt fucking polar bears. Like we have to care what other people think about us. We are social creatures. We are members of our tribe. Other people have expectations on us i.e. our family, our friends, our children, other people want to be able to rely on us. Who you are matters. And who and, and other people's opinions about you, they also matter. But here's the caveat on that. The people who hold opinions of you that should matter are people that are actually in your life, that actually have the ability to influence real life change. People that if you let down, you're going to fucking, there's going to be repercussions. People that if you stand up and you defend and you support, there's going to be real life repercussions. Like your actions inside of your community, they matter. How we treat each other matters. How you feel about each other matters. And if you don't think that's true, you're telling yourself a lie. So you have to build yourself into a person that is respected within your community that's respected amongst your peers. That's part of this existence. Sure. In today's world, it may not be as overt, right? We live in a life where you can be a fucking hermit and you can have a decent job and live in a studio apartment and you can just put your head down and have blinders on and do you. And it works for some people. But don't think that just because it works for some people that that's the norm. That's the exception. That's not the rule. Most people find an exponentially higher level of happiness when they have immersed themselves in a tribe of people that care about them, that are invested in them, that want to see them do well, that endure together with them. You go through hardships together. Like all of this stuff is super important to the human experience. And again, guys, I see it here at the gym on a daily basis, literally 
on a daily basis. I see people's lives being enriched from implementing a couple key simple concepts. I say it often. The concept is simple, but implementation is rather difficult because it takes work and it takes discipline. But if you show up and you're consistent and you put in effort and you bring a good positive attitude, that is the formula for success. I had it happen again. You know, one of my, one of my newer jujitsu students, he's been here three months now. And last week he presented me with a gift and it's for the podcast studio. And it's a big print of William Wallace. Um, it's a, it's a print from Braveheart and it's fucking awesome. So it's not up yet. So don't go looking on YouTube for it, but I'm going to kind of redecorate the studio. And that print is going to be here with a replica of William Wallace's broadsword or Scottish Claymore, whatever it is. If you're, if I, if I miss, you know, if I didn't pronounce that correctly or assign the correct sword terminology to that sword, I apologize. But the thing is the reason that I'm so moved by Braveheart and I always was since I was a little boy It's because he was unwilling to compromise. He had his values and he said, this is what we have to do, period. Super fucking inspiring to me. It has been my whole fucking life. But my point of bringing this up is this guy came into my office. I opened this present up and he said, listen to me, man. I've only been here three months. When I signed up, I could do five pushups. And he goes, now I can do 25. I'm down 20 pounds. And he goes, but most importantly, what this place has given me is the respect of my children. He goes, my sons see me come in here and train hard and they look at me differently now. And he goes, in order to be the man that I'm supposed to be for them, I know I have to be putting in work and becoming better. And I'm finding it right here. And he started tearing up and I gave him a big hug. And I said, bro, As special as this story is, as moving as this story is, it's also not surprising because that's what we fucking do here. That's who we are. And I love when another person gets on board this mission and starts to find the value in it. Now, guys, trust me, there are lots of jiu-jitsu academies throughout the country that are not towing the line. And I hate to say that, but I hear feedback from people all the time that are like, oh, I hear about your academy and I've been looking for one and I've tried a couple and, you know, just different problems or bad energy or whatever. And that's the world we live in, right? Not everything is equal. My academy hasn't become what it's become by accident. I've purposefully put a lot of energy into the community aspect of what we do here. The sauna and the cold plunge were some of the biggest keys to building that community. Because you fight each other for an hour and sure, there's a lot to be taken from that. There's tons to be taken from that, but you're not, you're bonding on a physical level, but you're not, and you're bonding on an emotional level, but you're not bonding on, I guess what you would call a mental level. You're not, you are not talking to each other about your problems or about your day or about your goals. And I actually... I actually push back when I see people talking while they're rolling. All right. For this hour, we're focusing on the physical aspects of bettering ourselves and it does bond you and it does bring you closer together. But what is equally as important after the fight is over, get to know that person. What makes them tick? What are they struggling with right now in life? Or, or what are, what are some of their goals or aspirations or what are they doing right now? That's bringing them joy. What are they doing right now to try and, you know, break out of the fucking hamster wheel they're stuck in? Like, what's their next mission? All these little things. If you can share that with another person, in my opinion, this might sound like some crazy woo-woo stuff, but part of growing and, and setting goals and accomplishing them is speaking them into existence. Now, it's like the chicken before the egg argument. When you speak things to existence, does it? actually change the course of future because of the vibrations that are coming out of your mouth and going out into the universe? Some people believe yes. The other possibility is when I speak things into existence, I'm saying things out loud. I'm sharing ideas with other people. Well, fuck, you know what I just did? I kind of put a little bit of accountability on myself. 
Because all these ideas that are spinning around my head all the time, if they're kept in my head and I never really pull the trigger on anything, no harm, no foul. No one really knows the difference, right? But if you start to build relationships with people that matter and you share those perspectives, you share those ideas, you share those goals, well, now if you don't take any action to start to move the needle and actually start to to build what you're attempting to build, if you don't do anything, those people are going to look at you like, hmm, a lot of talk, not a lot of action. That is not something that you want the people in your community to feel about you. It feels gross. Nobody listening wants to be the guy that is all talk and no action. That's a derogatory position to hold within a peer group. He's always saying this or that, but he never really follows through with anything. You don't want to be that person. So for me, I like sharing ideas because it forces me to then take action. Now, do I believe that there are some powers of manifestation? There are some powers of speaking things into existence. I I do. I do think that that is an element of it, but I think the truth is that element may come alive more based on your own understanding that, Hey, I said this shit. Now I got to do it. You know, for me, one of those tools is this podcast sitting here right now, talking to you guys, talking about what I want to do, you know, like the book, the book is a perfect example of that I'm over halfway done with the book now. And I'm a procrastinating motherfucker. I just am. I'm very, very good at staying on top of some things, especially in the physical realm. Like I don't don't struggle with working out or getting my rounds in on the mats. That's just become part of my daily routine, part of my life. But when I put a new goal forward, that's something that's well outside of my comfort zone, like sitting down and writing a book, man, I struggle. My book should have been done a year ago, but I don't have a fucking, I don't have the perfect fucking discipline. I struggle just like the rest of you guys. I'll tell you this though. I do think if I'd written my book in 2020, it wouldn't hold the power that it's going to hold now because I've grown as a man a lot. And I think I, I now offer a different level of value and a different level of insight. And just through life experience, we become older, we become wiser. And I think my book coming out in 2024 is going to be the perfect timing for it. You know, I, I, I struggle with imposter syndrome a lot when I was younger, you know, as a ranger and as a jujitsu black belt and all the shit that I've, I invested a lot of energy in and I got good at, but I always didn't, I, I never quite felt like I was good enough. And when you don't feel like you're good enough, the last thing you feel comfortable with is writing a fucking book and telling the world things that you think may benefit them or things that you may think will help them. Because if you're not good for yourself, who the fuck am I to tell anybody anything? And I can tell you without a doubt over the last couple of years, I've grown into a person that I'm proud of and that I know can offer value to other people. And right there, if you know you offer value to other people, man, it kind of sets you free. Because you trust in yourself. You believe in yourself. Now, just because I know I can offer value to other people doesn't mean I'm not fucking lost in plenty of other aspects of life, right? I don't, I don't think we ever arrive at a place where like, yep, I made it. I got it figured out. That ain't fucking me. Not a fucking chance. You know, I feel like every five years, I look back on myself and I say, that dude was a fucking idiot. Like, why didn't he do this? Why was he doing that? I can't believe that I held this perspective and uh, I have no doubts when I am a 50 year old man looking back on 43 year old Greg, who's sitting here speaking into this mic right now that I won't be like, dude, (laughs) that fucking kid thought he had, uh, thought he had the answers. Shit, man. But you have to be critical of yourself, but you also have to believe in yourself while you're here doing what you're doing right now. And I've arrived at that place and I'm here to tell you, it feels fucking good. So the whole reason that I want to build this online community of people, this online community of accountability is what I'm calling it, is because 
once you start to become accountable to people that are important and people that matter, man, it sets you free. And I think a lot of us right now are trying to be accountable to things that maybe we shouldn't be accountable to. We're not accountable to likes on Instagram. We're not accountable to the comments on social media of people telling us what a fucking retard we are. You don't need to be accountable to that. And I understand social media is an important tool, especially in my life with, with the podcast and, and you know, the, the line of merchandise that we sell and shit, there is a place for it, but I'm not accountable to that. And if people say stupid shit to me in those realms, sometimes it gets to me because I'm still a human being with an emotional response, but more often than not, it can fucking, I can brush it off my shoulders and I can move on and actually put my energy into things that matter. I want to build an accountability, an online network of accountability where there, it's not haters. It's not shitty people. It's people that want to see each other win. They want to lift each other up. They want to finally overcome all these fucking demons that have been plaguing their life through addiction or through obesity or through just not having the courage to make life choices that you know you need to make, but you just don't quite have what it takes to to step outside of your comfort zone and, and move the needle in a new direction. And we have to have people that support that. So this is what I'm thinking guys. And this is, this is going to be a living entity. It's going to adjust based on what the needs of the people, what the the needs of the members need, but in its foundation, it's going to be super affordable. I think we're going to do $42 a month. All right. And $42 a month for something that can bring your life happiness or move you into a move you along in a direction that benefits you. It's fucking nothing. When I go to Starbucks with my three kids, it's $42. Now it's crazy for coffee and fucking breakfast sandwiches. But what I want is I want a forum based platform where each day some type of tip is given and I'm going to break it down. Whereas on Mondays, we're going to do a Q and a, and depending on how big the platform is, we'll really have to dictate how many people's questions we can answer on any given day. But I want to do a live, like a Zoom type meeting with all teammates. And we just do Q&A and we bounce ideas off of each other and we answer questions. And the comment feed will be live to where, hey, you know, I'm having this problem with whatever. And maybe someone says, well, hey, I'm actually a fucking physician and I understand this because of blah, blah, blah. Pull that person on and be like, dude, let's talk to the team about this. Let's talk to you. Let's talk to each other about this. So one day a week, we're going to do that. Where as a team, we sit down and we discuss things and discussion is lost. You guys are listening to a podcast right now. Why are you listening to a podcast? In my opinion, and I, and I do the same thing, guys. I listened to a two hour episode of Joe Rogan today, but we crave conversation and we're not getting conversation at the level in which we crave human beings crave communication. So we're going to open up the week with communication. Following that Tuesday is going to be a nutritional tip to help you meet your nutritional goals. Not everybody on the program is going to be doing steak and apples. I get that. But let's talk about some different things, some different food choices, some different hydration techniques, some different supplements that have that have proven beneficial to us. Let's talk. Let's get in the weeds about our physical health. And I think the foundation of your physical health is what we're putting in our fucking mouths. So Tuesday is going to be a video talking about a nutritional tip or a nutritional guide or some advice nutritionally that has brought me to a higher level and helped me achieve some of my goals. And then with each video, the forums are open and everybody can talk about what they think is beneficial to them, or they can ask questions to other people. Remember guys, when you're forging ferocity and you're becoming a ferocious person, that doesn't mean that you're 210 pounds and you're shredded and you're a fucking beast. Sure, there will be those guys in the forums that have been there, done that. They're a little farther along the journey, but there's going to be guys that are 250 pounds that they started the journey two months ago and now they're 235 pounds. Well, guess what? 
That fucking person has a lot of valuable information to share with you because he's two months in and he sees what's been working and he sees what techniques have helped him and what techniques have hindered him. And that person's information is just as valuable as the next guy. That's what is important about this community. It's not where you're at. It's where you came from in relation to where you're at. And so I think all of this stuff is going to really be beneficial to people that want to find a community of people that want to get better. Wednesday, we're going to talk about fitness, your your strength training, your cardiovascular training, your mobility training, flexibility. We're going to talk about something that makes you a better person. What's, what's something you can do spending 10 minutes a day to make your physicality stronger? Most people can't touch their toes. I know that sounds crazy, but one of the biggest markers for longevity of human beings is flexibility. You don't hear that very often. You hear strength training and cardiovascular fitness. But if you can't touch your toes, bitch, we got a problem. Mobility is super important. And mobility and flexibility are very, very tightly combined. So let's talk about the different things that are going to bring your body a higher level of functionality. And mobility and flexibility is key. It's huge. Thursday, you know what we're going to talk about Thursday? We're going to talk about jujitsu. And so this is where I might lose some of you guys, but I'll fucking gain some of you other guys on the, on the other end of this. Part of my program, part of how I find a platform to help people is the mats. Now, there are plenty of other ways. I'm not saying the mats are the only way. I'm not even saying the mats are necessary, but it's my life. It's what I understand better than anything. And if I'm building a wellness program or an online program of accountability and we don't have jujitsu in it, well, what I'm doing is I'm taking a massive portion of my skill set and not implementing it. So let's talk about jujitsu. Thursday is going to be jujitsu. And the jujitsu technique of the week is going to be filmed from me instructing here at the academy. And I'm going to post that. And then it's going to be open discussion on whatever in relation to your jujitsu. It can be the, the actual physical implementation, implementation of the technique. Hey, I see you grip the pant here, but, but what if you move over a little deeper and grab, grab the pocket instead of the belt, like that kind of stuff for sure. We want to talk about that kind of stuff. Cool. Or maybe there's people in that haven't done any jujitsu or are new to it and want to ask, you know, the, the basic questions that I get literally daily in my inbox is like, what should I be looking for in a jujitsu academy? Let's talk about that too. Let's use the network to help other members enrich their life through jujitsu. And then the other side of it is a national network. Man, how fucking powerful will that be? Where it's like, well, dude, I live outside of Dallas. Do you guys know, you know, any good gyms there or any gyms you recommend? Like let's build a network to help each other out. And jujitsu is going to be a big part of that. If you haven't bought off on jujitsu yet, you're fucking missing out. And that's the truth. Now, maybe you watched my, my fucking, uh, or saw my post on Instagram yesterday where I talk about having my nose broken a bunch of times and I'm going in for surgery next week because of a hernia. Like on one hand, jujitsu is really hard and it beats the fuck out of you. It really does. But remember guys, part of the beauty in it is that it's hard and that it challenges you and that it hurts at times and that it's, it's emotionally difficult. Because you, you fucking, you tear a ligament and now you're out for six weeks or six months or whatever the fuck it may be. And you got to deal and you got to endure and you got to figure out how am I going to supplement my training? Like all parts of the journey are beneficial in the long run. And if you talk to any black belts, and the reason I say black belts is because that says that they've been doing jujitsu for a while. On the other, on the other side of injuries is growth. You talk to anyone that had a, a surgery or had to sit out for a while. When they come back, that experience made them a better person. And so it's part of it. Now, trust me, guys, I get it. I don't want to get injured. I don't seek being injured because on the other side of injuries are growth. Like I get it, right? But at the end of the day, 
If you get injured, you got, you got one of two choices, grow from it or fucking mope about it. So what are we going to do? And it teaches you to look at ad- adversity and tough situations and come out better and find the silver linings and the f- learning to find silver linings in jujitsu is one of the most powerful aspects of the journey. So Thursday will be jujitsu. And then on Friday, man, I don't want to call it mental health because there's like everybody overuses that. Like, oh, how's your mental health check today? But we're going to check in on people emotionally. We're going to check in on how people are doing on the inside. Are you having problems with a relationship that you have questions on? Is your boss being a fucking prick to you? And you, you want to kind of unpack why he's giving you bad energy. Like, like daily things that we deal with in life that are outside of the physical realm. It's not jujitsu. It's not fucking your diet. It's another, it's another kind of struggle that every single one of us faces. So it's going to be about relationships, emotional well-being, uh, your marriage, being a better parent. How can I make my kids fucking have more respect for me? All of these things that we all ask ourselves, that's Friday. We're going to fucking delve into that. And uh, again, guys, Monday, I'm front and center. I'll be leading the discussions. I will be available for questions. The next four days, I'm putting out the content for you guys to jump in and be accountable to each other. Now, obviously, I'll be in and out of all of those forms as well. I think it's, I think for this to work, everybody has to step up and have, for lack of a better term, like a leadership role in what we're building. And you know what, guys? It might be fucking five of us for the first two months. And just like my Jiu Jitsu Academy, I had 20 students for five years. But us 20, we got really fucking good at what we did. And because we were there, we were putting in the time, we were putting in the work. And it's not about how many people are here. It's about what you're doing with the people that are here. And that's why I'm excited to do this. If it's a fucking slow start, a slow burn, and and we don't get big numbers, but we're benefiting as a small group and we're holding each other accountable, fucking cool, man. Or maybe we'll fucking burn it down and it'll help lots of people, even cooler. But regardless, that's not the focus of it. The focus is who is going to be drawn to this who is going to find this concept appealing and then who's going to jump in and be a part of it and who's going to jump in and invest their time and their energy to not only enrich their own lives but enrich the lives of the people around them and i think it's super important and so the other thing that i want is i want a i want access to each other on this forum and i want people to be able to you know, like username, blah, 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 said this last week. And it's, I've been thinking about it. You can go in, you can go into the group and you can scroll through our list of usernames and you can find that person. And then you can DM them privately because maybe not everything you want. You know, if, if you're dealing with some dark shit, you know, you're, you're going through some, some problems that maybe you don't want on an open forum, but Hey, this guy has experience and he, t- he touched on this and I want to go in a little deeper Man, hit that person up slide into their dms as they say and 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 build something that can help each other so that's what the plan is going to be and the last thing that i'll say is my goal for this at the end of the day it's still the internet at the end of the day you're not looking into another man's eyes as you reply to his statement or reply to his question and in most networks People use that as an opportunity to give like a false sense of security or a false sense of courage and compassion is lost and and people start being rude as fuck to each other and people start talking shit to each other. We're not having any of that. You can go onto Twitter or Instagram or Facebook or TikTok. You can go into any of the other ones if you want to be a dick to other people. But on this platform, we're here to make each other better. Now, sometimes betterment of yourself doesn't always feel good. Maybe someone's going to have to say some hard truths to you. And just remember, hard truths are usually rooted in love. 
as opposed to hatred. But sometimes people aren't emotionally ready to hear those hard truths and they get defensive. That's probably half of the online fucking bickering that we see, or maybe it's 90% of it. But we're going to have some fucking standards that we hold ourselves to that if people have hard words for each other, man, we, we, we fucking take that and we take it objectively and we try and grow from it. But what it's not going to turn into is a fucking cesspool. The cesspool is what drives most of us away from social media. And, and I've said it on the show a lot, guys, social media is one of the most powerful tools in the world when used correctly. So instead of getting caught up with the haters and all these fuckers that want to tear each other down, let's use social media to better each other. It's very possible. It's very obtainable, but we have to go into it with the mindset that this is what we're doing here. And if someone prefers 308 over fucking 65 Creedmoor, it doesn't mean you hate each other. It's the fucking craziest thing I've ever seen in my life is people from the same community, people that are both two A advocates, people that are both hunters, people that are both jujitsu people. Like you get people from the same community that share the same passion, but they have a little disagreement and the gloves come off and it's war. It's not necessary guys. We can have different opinions without hating each other. But if you are that person that's just a piece of shit and you're a troll and you pay your $42 a month just so you can log on and and tell everybody what fucking pieces of shit they are, well, guess what? Goodbye. (laughs) Very simple, right? You're not an advocate of freedom of speech. You're right. I'm not. Because you can take your freedom of speech and you can go down to your fucking local supermarket and you can stand out front and talk shit to everybody that you want. But on our platform, it's not built around negativity and low vibrations. It's about building each other up and becoming stronger. So guys, I go in for surgery next week and I'm going to be down for two fucking months. It sounds like I already know that's going to be challenging for me. I already know that my mental health is going to struggle with no fucking gym, no jujitsu, I don't know how long I can't have sex for like all the stuff I live for. I'm going to be fucking, I'm not going to have it available to me and I'm not going to like that. But again, what are the silver linings of this? Well, these are the silver linings. I'm hoping to get my book done in those two months. I'm hoping to get Forge Ferocity up and running in those two months. And maybe the universe is throwing a problem at me to force me to take a, a, put some of the other things that I love on the back burner and really fucking put a lot of energy into these new goals. And that's the only way I can look at it. My guitar, my book, and this new online program of accountability are going to be what really, really consumes my time. And I think that that's going to pay off in the long run. I think these things are going to be beneficial, not only to me personally, but to the community of people that want to invest in them. So, you know, guys, I said today would probably be a short episode. We're at 50 minutes, which uh, just sitting down and talking for 50 minutes is actually kind of long. But, you know, I got other things that I want to talk about. I have a list of, uh, of topics here, but I want to leave today on a good note. I want to leave today on focusing on what we just talked about, finding a community of people and becoming better, becoming stronger, becoming more resilient. And... I've received enough emails over the years from people that are hungry for this. They're hungry to be part of something that is comprised of good people. And as dark as it is to say, man, I think there are places in this country where finding good people is tough. Finding people that want to hold you to a higher standard, finding people that want to see you succeed and and win, man, it's tough. And if you're one of those people, Well, it's just, it's exactly what I said last week. If you can find a brick and mortar location to share time and space with those people, that's probably your better option. There's nothing like sitting across a table, looking someone in their eyes and sharing real thoughts. But if that's not available to you, what's the next best thing? This will be the next best thing. And just because it's online doesn't make it any less real. Okay. Don't, don't mistake 
the fact that it's on the, the fact that it's going to be online as something that diminishes its power. I look at I look at today, my life today, my life changed dramatically, all as a result of things that took place online. A viral video, a GoFundMe. Lots of my new friends that that are actually meaningful relationships, you know? A lot of people that I feel close with, I met over Instagram. And now we have real life relationships. We have real life business ventures together. We're hanging out. We're doing things that, that are impactful to us and our family. And it all started online. Fucking Greg Lappin is one of my best friends on planet earth. You guys have heard him on the show a thousand times. We met on Instagram. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy, but we did. Now it just so happened that we have about a hundred mutual friends and we, we worked with the similar teams in Iraq. It, I honestly think me and Greg Lappin were just two ships passing in the night through different contracts in Iraq and, and all the stuff that we did. But at the end of the day, we connected over Instagram and we became very fucking close and we're doing a lot of cool shit together. So those people are out there. It's the same thing with Mike Glover. You know, like I was able to really build a powerful friendship with him and it all started because we started to follow each other on Instagram. So don't diminish the power of what the internet can do for you when you use it for good. I'm going to leave you guys with that. Um, I fly out on Sunday and next week's guest is going to be Tony Cowden. Tony's a friend of mine. He's come out. He's, he's done some work on my range. I've had really powerful conversations with Tony and he is someone that fucking has lived a wild, wild life. And I'm excited for that episode. Again, he's another one connected with him on Instagram. And now that connection on Instagram turned into him coming out and visiting my jujitsu academy. Man, he sat down and told my jujitsu students stories for an hour or two one night and just blowing people's minds. The next day we went out to my range and, and he showed a bunch of cool fucking things that he does in, in regards to pistol and rifle shooting. And just again, real life shit happening when we connected on Instagram. And so never diminish that guys, but yeah, I'll be back next week with Tony Cowden and then I'm going to be down for a little bit. Um, I don't know what being down during a hernia recovery really looks like. Am I going to be able to sit here and record episodes? You fucking bet your ass I'm going to be. But I'm not sure what the op tempo is going to be like with the podcast. Uh, the gym is going to run as it always does on schedule. A lot of my assistant coaches are going to be picking up the slack for me, which is greatly appreciated. But uh, everything continues. It's just another bump in the road. And uh, once I heal up and get back on the mats, get back to traveling, get back to going around the country, connecting with cool fucking people having them tell their stories on the show, life's going to go on. So I appreciate you guys and we'll fucking be back next week with Tony Cowden.